going on people today ain't been a good day um i'm actually heading up north to a new place and i'll tell you why in just a minute but before i get into anything i wanted to show you this graph if you look at this graph It'll show, it shows you 20% of the people that are watching my videos are not, sub, only 20% only are subscribed. Guys, if you're not, if you're watching my videos, I don't want you to stop watching my videos. But if you're watching them and you're not subscribed, you're, you're kind of hurting the channel. Well, actually, you're hurting the algorithm. Liking and subscribing lets YouTube know that, hey, I like the information I found on this channel. Please recommend it to me more often and that's that's how youtube works so please consider subscribing i would greatly greatly appreciate it and i thank you from the bottom of my heart so um i'll explain more about what's going on in just a second but first if you're new to the channel welcome i appreciate you being here my name is brian and you're watching Something's wrong with our worm, Earl. So what are we doing today? Well, as you can, I don't know if you can tell right out there how dingy and cloudy and drizzly it is outside. It's been doing that all day. Um, me and Nate got the jobs we needed to get done, done, but not without getting wet. And when we got to the portion of the job that we needed to use the blower, the uh, Echo PB9010T it would crank but it would not run and what I discovered was I noticed it yesterday but I did not put it together until today I noticed there was oil on the engine up underneath between the um, above, right above the gas tank and, and look at this car pulling out in front of me and the word road wet. I swear some people just don't get it. But anyway, um, let me put my glasses on because I'm, I'm having to squint and I don't like to do that. And no, I'm not doing this to look cool. I'm doing it for safety's sake. But I noticed there was oil. Well, I had one a few years back do the same exact thing, had the exact same symptoms. And what I'm thinking it is, is the crankcase seal. The crankcase seal seals the, um, the crankcase and allows it to create vacuum. And a, well, it's actually a pulsing vacuum, which acts as the fuel pump for the, the motor. And when that, when it, as you turn that motor, it, it pulsates and creates like a uh, fuel pump um, effect. Well, when that seal starts to leak, it loses vacuum, which allows the motor, which doesn't allow the motor to pull the fuel like it is. The reason I say I'm thinking that's what it is, is because it's, uh, it'll run with the choke on, but as soon as you let the choke off, as soon as you hit the trigger, it bogs down and eventually cuts off. Well, Nate did what he could to keep it running, but it eventually cut off on him and now it won't crank at all. It's in the back of Clifford back there and I'm taking it up to a place called the Great Outdoors in above Dunn, North Carolina. It's a pretty good trek from the shop, but they are the only ones around here other than the dealership I used to deal with that works on them. And so being that I live on the Northern side, I'm gonna go up here. So that's where we're headed now. So stick around guys, when I get there and it ain't pouring down rain, I'll take the camera out there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I hope you guys stick around, I'll see you there. So we're coming into the big town of Dunn. Got to follow the road I'm on right now, which I think I go, I go straight here. I think, because there's no road signs to tell me otherwise, but we'll find it eventually. 
Now she said you come up here and turn left onto 301, yep, right here, 301 North. So you come up here to the Velero and take a left. So let's take a left and see where we get. See what we get. It says 301 North. Let me go across a railroad track. Let me turn the camera around so you guys can see where I'm at. Get across this railroad track here. There we go. Now, this is an old town right here. turns to the right. That's exactly exactly how she told me to get here. Cool. Well, I'll bring y'all back in when I get there. Alright, now, looking for the great outdoors. She said it was about a mile out of town. I'm going. Maybe this, yeah, there's the trash company right there. She said it was right past the trash company. Yep, there it is right there. Great outdoors. Cool. Let me get pulled in here right quick. And we are here. All right, guys, I got the camera and the door. I'm gonna take you back here to show you what this thing looks like. Get Clifford opened up. Well, no wonder it wouldn't move. <laughs> yeah, you see that oil? Nate, let this thing lay back in here. Yeah, you see that oil right there? And then if you look up in there, you can see it is coated with oil. Right behind this, or right in here somewhere, is the crankcase seal. And I think that's what my problem is. But we're going to take it in here, drop it off, and let them look at it. Yeah, that's not good. Uh... Talk to the lady inside. There's nobody here today to even look at it. So it's going to be tomorrow. So I asked, I asked her what the, um, what I was looking at ballpark. And she said, well, you're looking at an hour to an hour and a half of labor. That's $150. And the kit, the, the crankcase seal comes with other stuff. And it, the kit itself is $100. So we're already at $250. That blower is over five years old and this camera is crooked for some reason. I don't know why. <clears throat> but the, this blower is five or six years old. I don't know that I'll end it. Now, if they call me back and say, we can fix it for $100, $150, sure, I'll do that. But the rest of it, if it's if it's that high, I told her, I said, call me before you do proceed with any kind of repair work and let me know what the cost is going to be before you do anything so that's where we're at guys so what we're going to do now we're going to go to the other dealer that i'm dealing with and uh we're going to see what they've got and i'm probably going to end up buying a blower so i hope you guys stick around well i just pulled up at the new dealer i've been dealing with here lately this is lanky's bicycle shop they sell lawn equipment and things like that 
I'm going to step inside and see what they've got and um, probably be coming out with a new blower. Y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all. I am back in the truck. I'm backing out. And yes, I bought a new blower. See, so I'm going to get back to the shop and hopefully it won't be raining there like it is here. And uh, I will be revealing then what I what I purchased. So, all right, we're back at the shop. Um, before I go into what I bought, I wanted to give you a little backstory on what's going on with the Echo. The Echo is probably going to cost between two and two hundred fifty dollars to fix. And if that's the case, I probably will go ahead and tell them to repair it. But if it's going to be any more than that, I'm not going to I'm not going to invest the money into in repairing it. I'll just buy another blower later in the year for the fall, and I'll buy a bigger one than what I bought today. <clears throat> but anyway, I probably will stick with Echo. I'm not sure yet, but time will tell. I just have to cross that bridge when I come to it. But anyway, so what did I decide to go with? Well, a lot of times when you're buying equipment, you have to go with where you can get the best deal. And so I went to the dealership uh, that I've been doing kind of investigation with in buying another mower. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that or not. Um, I'm thinking about replacing this errands. I've almost got it paid off and I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to keep it or I'm going to run it on a full-time basis. Haven't made up my mind yet, but again, time will tell. So what did I buy? Well, if you haven't seen the video that I did with um, introducing another blower that my buddy had, my brother from another mother, I, I will leave a link in the description box below for that video. You can go check it out. And I, I made the statement in that video that I intended on having a, one of those blowers. I didn't intend on it being this way though. Uh, the only reason I bought a new one was because my other one's in the shop and I don't know how long it's going to be there. And I have to have a blower. So anyway, this is what I bought guys. I bought the steel BR450. Um, I looked at this one and I looked at the 500. This one weighs four pounds less than the 500. It, uh, it had, it moves. Uh, I'm, I, I, I need to have the book with me, but I tried to remember the numbers. But uh, I do know this, it moves 80 CFM more air than the 500. And it also blows 40 miles an hour faster than the 500. And here's the best part, and this one was $60 less. So it was a no-brainer. I've already used, I haven't used this particular blower yet, but I have used the 450. As I said in that other video, or with, as I said in that other video, I gave it a run through. I gave it, I put it through its paces. And I was, I had in mind, I was comparing it to the Echo PB8010T. Now, does it blow near the CFM of the Echo? No, it does not. But, at the end of the day, your back and your shoulders aren't hurting. Now, will it take longer to move wet material than it does the Echo? Oh yeah, it will. But, what I'm primarily, I'm using this one to get me over a hump right now. What I'm primarily going to be using this for is blowing off sidewalks and driveways and blowing out flower beds and things like that. Where the echo will come into play is in the fall when we have lots of matter on the ground. Then Nate can clean out from around the houses with this one while I'm doing the larger areas with the big blower. So was this a necessary investment? Absolutely. Because doing the kind of work I do, you're either going to use this or you're going to use a broom. Well, I ain't using a broom. And the, um, the echo is a great machine. I hope and pray that it is not real expensive or cost a lot of money to get it going again. I really do. But as you saw in the video, in this video earlier, 
it's leaking oil, which there's only one, one thing wrong that can be causing that, and that's the crankcase seal. Because it is sealed, and when that seal, the the um, the the uh, pressure inside the crankcase, it's a pulsing action, and it acts as a fuel pump for the machine. Well, when it got to where it wouldn't run unless you had to choke on it, I knew then that that's that's most likely the problem. So anyway, uh, I will be doing a video on this thing, at using it and reviewing it. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't yet, please be sure and click the like button and the subscribe button. Guys, I'm trying to grow my channel. I appreciate every one of you that not only watch but comment on my, on my videos. You are, I can't do this without you. I'm not going to get mushy. I'm just saying I can't do this without you. But I want to grow my channel and I want it to grow faster. So please like, subscribe, and share these videos. I am almost positive there's someone you know that could get some information, glean some information, and get some helpful tips out of one of my videos. I'm almost positive. So please do that. I would greatly appreciate it. You would be my hero. Until next time, guys, this is Brian with Big South Outdoors TV, reminding you to live big, live southern, and live outdoors. Until we meet again, folks, have a good one.